Hey, it's Luke. It's so much easier if you have a MIDI keyboard or controller, or even better if you use Ableton Push. But if you don't have an external MIDI keyboard, you don't absolutely need one. I worked on music for years without one when I was starting out. There are a whole bunch of ways to make it easier to get the notes into Ableton Live, and here are about a dozen of them. The first thing you're going to want to do is to get really used to the clip settings here. Using things like Legato, if you're used to doing this and then you're drawing another note in and then you're going to do another one here, it's, it just takes a long time. So you'll want to get used to hitting Alt or Option. And when you click on a note and you hold that down, you can drag the new note wherever you want. So it actually makes a note the same length as what you're, you're copying. So it's basically duplicating the note, but letting you put it anywhere you want. Another thing that's useful to do is to choose a scale here. So let's say we're going to work in uh, G minor. Let's delete all of these notes and start over. If you uh, click on scale here, all of the notes that show up here will be in the scale. So it just saves you from having to go further up. If we remove the scale here, you're moving around a whole lot more. So this just makes it a little bit more compact so you can just go right into uh, to your notes. Little shortcuts like this will just make it easier as you're working on stuff. And then if we go back to uh, this mode here, if you want to extend these notes all the way to the end, you can just select them and hit Legato and it'll go right up to the end of that section or to wherever your next note is. Another thing you might want to do is to make sure that this is on here, the little keyboard icon here, and it lets you play notes with your computer keyboard. So that's really nice, especially if you're on a laptop and you're traveling or something, you can just play the notes with that without having anything external. Something else that's really useful is to look for some regenerative tools or sequencers in Ableton Live. So over here, I just have a normal preset for some bells. And if we add this melodic steps, I think this is only available on Suite, but when you hit play, you've got a little bit of randomness here for the notes, the transposition of the notes, and even the octaves. Depending on the type of music you're making and the sounds, so if you play around in here, actually, and if we go back to here working in F minor, or G minor, I believe. Let's go a little bit higher, because... It'll create some patterns. This is very random and we're just playing around with it a little bit. But if you can use tools like this to create some of the notes so you're not needing to draw everything in, uh, something else is the arpeggiator. So if we do the same type of thing and we'll go into... and choose a few different effects. So instead of going in and drawing each of these notes one by one, you're able to go in and have it play some of those patterns for you. Ableton, especially through Max for Live, has a whole bunch of tools that can help you with stuff like that. There's, a, I have a list here, the beat repeat device, rotating rhythm generator that actually is available in intro and standard and suite, not just the full version. There's Melodic Steps, Pitch Loop 89. The Probability Pack is a great one if you have Suite, and especially there's something called the Step Divider in there that could be really useful. There's the Essentials Pack, and Live 12 will have even more tools like this. It's got a lot of ways to work with the MIDI and the piano roll. Now, whatever you automate can help too. So if we add an auto filter here, I love using this because it's just so quick to set up. If we go back to this, this sound here, let's just record a... So we're just creating a very simple pattern here. Let's end it right here and make sure it's looping. And then if we go into the auto filter here, I love playing around with this built-in LFO here. So if you bring it down, you can tell it's, it's building up and down. You can make it much faster. 
And something like this, if you had to draw it in and you don't have access to the knobs on a MIDI keyboard or whatever, um, you could just do it automatically instead of having to go into the MIDI and draw in your curves and everything, which takes up a lot more time. So it's nice to automate some stuff like this. It gives it a little bit of movement. It's really, really easy to set up. And there are a whole bunch of devices that you can do that with. Or you can just load up the LFO device here and just map it to pretty well anything you want. Now, depending on which plugins you have already, you might have some that can help you out with making things a little bit quicker. So if we go this one, and uh, this is Captain Plugins. And it'll let you set up a whole bunch of chords really quickly. It doesn't sound like much right now. It's just a regular piano sound, but you can work on it in here and then transfer the MIDI and keep working on it in Ableton Live using whatever plugins you were using already. So you can do it like this, but this lets you add a whole bunch of, com it's a little bit loud. Let's just bring this down. So you can take whichever chord you're playing and you can add to the complexity. So add some extra, extra notes. But if you were doing this by drawing it in, you'd have to go and draw in each note. And this one can just do it a lot more quickly and you can build on your tracks and it could save you a little bit of time drawing everything in. Something else that could be useful is looking through your plugins for any of them that have a built-in sequencer, something like Drumazon 2. So instead of going in and drawing each of these notes manually, you might have some in the presets to get you started. Or even if you do draw them in here, you've got a loop to work with and you don't have to go back and forth between the MIDI and the plugin. Some other plugins that are really useful for something like this is pretty well anything from UJAM where you can just press one note and it'll do something. So we'll just do legato here and uh, hit play. You can change the patterns. So you're really just drawing in a few notes to get started and you can do a whole bunch of stuff with it. On the newer ones, you can even drag MIDI into another track and you could throw an instrument on here and you've got your MIDI drawn in that you can play around with. Now look through your synths and see if some of them might have some sequencing built in. Like this one here, Elements from Waves, has a whole bunch of sequences And you can find something you like and then go into the sequencer and just adjust the notes. So whichever one you use, go into the presets and look for something like SEQ sequence or ARP, something like that, that might have some patterns built in and it'll give you a starting point so you don't have to draw everything in once again. <laughs> no matter which instrument you use, you can look for stuff like this chord device and add it to any MIDI track. And then what you'll do is draw in even just one note here and we'll hit legato again, like we mentioned earlier. And if we just play this, it's just playing that one note. But if we go into the chord setting, we can add, we can add a note one octave down, one octave up, and uh, we can do the seven, seven tones here. So all of a sudden, you've taken that one note that you drew in here, but it's actually playing four notes at the same time, and uh, you can work with that. There are a whole bunch of presets in here too that you can use to get you started. So you're just hitting that same note. It'll do the fifth on its own, and then this one here that I really like. So you're just playing that one note, and it's making it sound a lot busier. Another trick to make things a little bit quicker is to work on shorter loops and build them up and then you can expand them later. So instead of having four bars here where what we'd usually do is hit the, the kick drum here and then we'd have the snare here and here. So what we'll do is we'll just make it shorter here, just have the two bars here and work on it whichever way we want. And 
Once you've got something that you like, just take your loop, select all, and then hit duplicate here, and it'll make it longer. And that's where you can do your fills at the end of a bar or whatever it is. There are also a bunch of apps where you can work on your iPad or your phone and then bring the MIDI into Ableton later. Another option is if you bought some sample packs that have some royalty-free MIDI files in them, you can bring those in as a starting point as well. And sometimes it's just easier to move stuff around instead of starting everything from scratch. A lot of people don't know that you can do this, but if you add your Ableton project folders in here under places, you can go into an older project and let's say I had a drum rack here. I can bring this in as a new MIDI file. It will actually load up the drum rack that I had in the other file and it'll bring the MIDI in as well. So I'm ready to play it on its own. So it's really useful to be able to reuse things that you worked on in other tracks. So sooner or later, you'll want a MIDI keyboard and they're so nice to work with. But if you don't have one, don't let that stop you from getting started. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.